Okay, so in this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at how we turn this wonderful, cute looking dog into a meme. So basically, we're gonna be looking at cutting out images, creating vector based layers for the background, and then also working a little bit with type. Okay, so we'll take you through it step by step, talk about the tools you're using, and also then look at how we export for the web. Okay, so first things first, let's grab this dog. So if we create a new file first, this is gonna be the size of our, our meme that we're creating. We're gonna create it at 600 pixels wide by 600 pixels high. Okay, if you don't see the pixels on the right hand side here, then just drop down and select pixels from the list. Basically, we're working for the web, so we don't need anything much bigger than that. This is gonna be an image that we post on Twitter or something. So the next step, make sure your background is white, okay? It won't matter too much later on in the tutorial because we're gonna put our own background on, but as we set out, we want a white background. It just makes things a little easier to work with. Okay, we're ready to go. So we have our square image here, and now what we wanna do is drop this image and actually just the, the selected area here onto our new document. Okay, so for this cutting out, we're gonna choose the polygonal lasso tool, okay? We could use the magnetic lasso tool for some of these edges, but around the bottom of the dog's head, we don't really have that clear an edge there, so we're gonna to need to do this manually, okay? I'm gonna zoom in now, so I'm gonna use Command or Control on the PC and Plus to zoom right in, and then I'm quite quickly just gonna run around the edge of my object here. So with the polygonal lasso tool, I can hit the space bar and it'll allow me to move around, and essentially I'm doing a, a dot to dot drawing this is gonna be a pretty rough and ready cutout of the dog's head here, but that's all we need for the, the type of image we're producing. The interesting thing here will be the use of the layer mask that we're gonna create in order to make the transparency for this image. So let's come all the way around here. And when you come back around to the beginning of your selection, you'll notice that when I join these two points, I get a little circle next to my polygonal lasso tool, and that indicates that I'm gonna close that selection off. So let's zoom out. So Command or Control and Zero to zoom to fit. Now I wanna use a layer mask to cut this out because it, that is a, a mask that I can go back and edit and refine if I need to at a later point in time, okay? So I'm gonna unlock this layer first. So I'm gonna double click on the background layer just in this empty blue area here, okay? and that's gonna create a new layer. So I'm turning my background layer into a regular layer. I lose the padlock on the right-hand side there. That now means I can create a layer mask, okay? So I'm gonna click on my Add Layer Mask button here with the selection, and then you can see that I get this black and white image attached to my original layer, okay? So now this is what we wanna move across into our meme that we're making, okay? So in order to do that, I'm gonna undock this tab at the top. So I'm gonna click and drag, okay, and now, once I've undocked that particular layer, I can just move this to the side and I can still see, because I have this image selected, I can still see my layers panel. So now I can click in the layers panel and drag my image right here onto the new image, okay? Now, my dog image is a lot bigger than the meme I set up. So I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit, go to edit, transform and scale, okay? And then I'm gonna just zoom until I can see the box edges of my images. Hold down shift as I'm transforming and then just move my dog's head into position here. Okay, so somewhere around the middle with a little bit of space for type at the top and bottom. Hit enter. Okay, so now the next step that we're gonna go through is actually creating the background for this image. Now we're gonna use the polygon tool to do this. Now, the polygon tool is a vector-based tool in Photoshop and it enables you to create shapes. We can also manipulate those shapes and that's what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna go down to the bottom of our toolbar and you'll probably see if you haven't used the polygon tool before, the rectangle tool listed here, okay? So the rectangle tool will draw a square or a rectangle. The polygon tool enables us to define the number of sides that we have in our polygon. Okay, and for this exercise, we're gonna set the number of sides to 21. Okay, so polygon is selected, come up to your options panel up here and just type in 21. And that means that now when we draw our polygon, it will draw a 21 sided object and we can manipulate it into a pattern. So I'm gonna change the fill color to a nice hot pink. Okay, and I'm gonna drag this out. I'm dragging it out so it's bigger than my image. So now, drag that out, I can move this into position, okay? And I'm also gonna add a couple of guides here. So if you don't see the rulers on the top and left-hand side of your page in Photoshop here, then just go to view and check rulers, okay? And I just wanna make sure that when I'm adjusting my 
polygon, the 21 sided polygon that I made, I'm lining things up to the center, which we'll, we'll see in a sec. So my polygon layer is selected here. Okay, now if I go down again to the bottom of my toolbar and just click on the arrow tool here, I don't want the path selection tool, I want the direct selection tool. So just make sure you're selecting this white arrow tool. Okay. Once you've got that selected, you'll see the individual polygons. So this is basically a mathematical shape that's drawn out in Photoshop. And essentially what I can do is I can select individual points and then drag them down to the center. Okay, so I'm gonna select these points. So you can see I'm leaving two up here, dragging one to the middle, leaving two up, dragging one to the middle, and that's creating this kind of splayed out pattern. Okay, and 21 is the magic number because it means you keep that pattern. Hit enter, and that will apply it. Now I want to duplicate this layer, so I'm going to drag this down to the new layers panel on the right hand side here. Okay, you can see I've got two layers here. I can change the fill of my new layer, I'll change it to a, a nice blue. And then I'm going to go to Edit, Free Transform, come just to the edge of my scale box here, and then just rotate this round. A little bit okay and I want to make sure these are overlapping so I'm just rotating a little bit so that those layers are still overlapping and then I'm going to do the same again okay double click on my layer here and I can also change the the color up here too. edit free transform rotate my layer around and then with this one I just want to increase the size of some of these so that we've got a nice overlap happening. I just want to increase the size of some of these triangles that are coming out so I can get that overlap. Okay, so I'm just going to grab the direct selection tool again. I'll apply the change, the scale change, and then I'll just drag these out. Okay, so I'm dragging those individual points out, making sure they're overlapping. Okay, hit enter. And now I'm gonna pull my dog's head back up to the top. And you can see we have this nice pattern behind the dog's head. So I'm gonna zoom to fit that. And now what I wanna do is just add a little drop shadow on this so that it kind of looks like the, there's a bit of depth in my image. So for this, I'm gonna select my dog's head layer, go to FX and then drop shadow. And then I'm just going to set the distance for the drop shadow to zero. So it's right behind that image and then just push the size up until I'm happy with it. So it's just going to give this sense that that image is popping out from the background. I've got preview checked on here as well, just to make sure that I can see the changes that I'm making. And when I'm changing drop shadow, you'll see it's highlighted in blue here as well. Click OK. OK, so now we'll jump in and add our text. So I'm going to click the type tool and then drag out my type tool. Now I've already got the font set up that I'm going to use, which is Impact. It's set at 78 points here. You can change and adjust that. And I'm just going to type in Learn first of all, and then position this as I want it. And then for this layer, I'm going to add another effect, a stroke. Okay, so I'm going to add a black stroke, a few pixels, click OK, and then I'll duplicate this layer. So you can see I've got my text layers duplicated, just duplicating by dragging down to the new layers bar here, and then click and hold, drag that down, and then we'll type in Photoshop. Okay, so now we've created our, our meme. If we zoom out, you can see it's gonna read nicely when we're zoomed out from it. We're ready to export this now. We're gonna save it out as a JPEG. So we'll go to File, Save for Web. We're gonna to go to the optimized view here, and we're just gonna be saving this out as a JPEG. Okay, so a JPEG, we're going to make sure the quality is set nice and high. Okay, so somewhere around 70 to 80. Okay, and then once you've got that set up, save, and then we'll just type in the name for our exported file, hit save, and there we have it. We've exported out our meme, and we can upload that and share it online. I hope that's been useful. I use this meme opportunity as a a way of introducing the different ways you can work in Photoshop, such as chopping out images, creating a background, using the vector-based layers, and also working with type. And I think it's a real nice, quick, 
way of getting to grips with these different topics. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Send me a tweet at Ben Housel if you have any questions, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.